Hello everyone, my name is Nicoba and welcome back to Satisfactory. We are here at our storage system and you can see that we have overflowed on our aluminum casings and our all clad aluminum sheets, which is excellent. It means our aluminum factory is working a charm and we can now move on to our next project. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started today by expanding our logistics system, setting up a small factory to produce radio control units. And then we'll jump into our main build for today, which is gonna be a small supercomputer factory. Now this is gonna be a very small supercomputer factory as far as they go, producing one supercomputer a minute. Now this is unlikely to be the only source of supercomputers in this series, although I've been crunching the numbers and it may actually provide us with enough to see us through to the end of the game. So we'll have to see how that goes. But I do have some ideas for how to put together a relatively simple factory that'll produce supercomputers. And that's gonna be a great starting place for us. Now, before we get into the build, I wanna talk a little bit about logistics and how we are making logistics work here at our factory. So far, we've been bringing in a lot of resources via train line to main base and filling assorted storage containers with them. You can see here, we have overflowing storage containers with uh, aluminum casings, all clad sheets, uh, crystal oscillators, computers, and a number of other resources. And some of these resources are things that we don't necessarily need to keep stockpiling, particularly things like aluminum casings. We need a a few aluminum casings for unlocking milestones or possibly for producing a few individual items here and there. But aluminum casings aren't used in the construction of any buildings, for example, and so we don't need to have a large stockpile of them on the hand. Compare that to say the all clad aluminum sheets, which are a belt material, and we are likely to need a tremendous number of those going forward. So we're gonna keep bringing those in. But most of the rest of the things we have stockpiled here uh, particularly if we have an overflowing industrial storage container, I think it's okay for us to stop bringing it. Things like crystal oscillators are used for signs uh, and a handful of different vehicles, but, but we have 4,800 crystal oscillators in the storage container, and that is more than plenty to see us through to the end of the game. Same deal with computers, rubber, plastic, and uh, heavy modular frames. Now, plastic we may want a lot of because they're used for pipe materials, but but again, with nearly 10,000 in a storage container, I think we are in a position to do just fine for the time being. So what this means is that we're gonna be able to redirect some of these components and use them in another factory. In particular, the first factory we're gonna be building is gonna make use of a number of these components. And so we're going to take the trains that are coming here with those factories and simply change their timetables to have them deliver to another station. Speaking of that, I think it's time for our first time lapse where we expand our train network. and we are here at our brand new radio control factory. Now this is a very simple factory and the reason for that, because as discussed earlier, we are able to redirect the supply lines for this factory from our other factories. We have enough computers and crystal oscillators and aluminum casings on hand, but we shouldn't need any more just to have stockpiled around so we can send those here into radio control units. Now we're gonna use this factory in much the same way. We're gonna be sending these control units back to main base to fill up an industrial storage container full. Once that's full though, we'll be constructing a factory that will make use of these radio control units and we'll simply redirect the logistics line, the train that's taking them from here to main base will instead be taken from here to another factory. Now, the reason that we can do that and the reason I'm confident that we can do that safely is because I've done some simple math on it. Radio control units are only used in a handful of buildings. Notably, they're used in blenders and then drones and drone ports. 
Now, a drone takes one radio control unit, a drone port takes 10, and a blender, I think, also takes 10. And since an industrial storage container can hold 2,400 radio control units, that means that we could literally make thousands of drones or hundreds of drone ports and blenders. So I'm pretty confident that a storage container will last us a good long while in terms of the number that we need to just sort of have on hand. And so, so instead of just sinking the excess that we're producing, we'll, just, we'll go ahead and make use of them. And in the event that we do run out, we can always scale up this factory or build another one in a new location. All right, now before we head over to the supercomputer factory, I wanted to show you guys this build. You can see we've got our train line heading up into the factory there. Now this is going to be the raw materials depot that supplies the supercomputer factory. You can see we've tapped a copper vein as well as an iron vein here. And we are going to mine and smelt precisely enough resources to supply the factory, which means that once we have that factory in place, we don't need to worry about supplies running short. If we end up expanding that factory, we can simply expand this depot a little bit and we will be squared away and good to go. All right, and we are here at the location of our future supercomputer factory. And you can see I have already done some design work to cordon off different, different parts of the factory and lay out how it's all going to fit together. Now, this is something I often do when planning out a build because it helps keep the logistics lines a little bit cleaner. Now, what we have here on the asphalt areas are gonna be our preliminary production. That's gonna be a uh, quick wire there in the corner and then copper sheets up on the elevated platform we'll be making our circuit boards and down here we'll have our a constructor area make cabling as well as screws and there on the white concrete we'll have our sort of secondary production where we'll be making ai limiters in an assembler and then two manufacturers one producing high speed connectors one one producing computers and then there on the end we'll have another manufacturer make a super you can also see that I've run an excessive amount of power throughout this. Those, that's going to be torn down and replaced as we go. But that's just to make sure that my hover pack is able to function and that I'm able to sort of fly freely as we're building. So I think with that out of the way, let's get into the build.
All right, and that is a supercomputer factory all complete, and you can see that it is working beautifully. Let's go through how it works. All right, we're starting off by mining some Caterium and turning that into Caterium ingots. These smelters are tuned to provide exactly the right amount of Caterium we will need for our quickwire constructors over at the factory. Over here, you can see we've set up a small plastic refinery. We're just using the default recipe for plastic. Uh, we, we may recapture this oil and send it into a more efficient plant at a later time, uh, but right now we are just sending that plastic down the hill there and into a, a train station. You can see we're also capturing the leftover crude oil. We're only tapping one vein for the plastic, so the other uh, veins are going into a train station for some crude oil, which we will redirect and use at a later time. All right, now just across the way over here, you can see that we have our raw materials depot. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop over here. It looks like we have forgotten to hook up one of our smelters. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Boom. Perfect. All right, so this is producing the uh, copper and iron that is then being sent to our factory via train line. So essentially how our train line works is it comes here, it gathers up the copper and iron, heads down the rail there, pops on over into the factory underneath to pick up the plastic, loops back around and then heads on up to the computer factory there in the distance. Uh, and then when it's done, it sends a quick line back over to main base and then pops on back. And this is time to allow for uh, a nearly perfect trip time with the amount of materials that are being mined. Now over here at our factory, we start by bringing a train in along these tracks and unloading the materials. You can see there is our uh, Caterium vein coming in from up in the mountains there. That pops on over and goes to four constructors making quick wire. That quick wire is then sent underneath the platform and half of it is being fed into the assembler and half into the first manufacturer that's making the AI limiters and the high speed connectors. Now, the materials that are coming in via train line are sent to the rest of the factory. So uh, first off, we have copper that's going to be coming in, and that will be going into this set of constructors here, making copper sheet. Those copper sheets are then sent into a number of assemblers making circuit boards, uh, and then some are sent over to be turned into AI limiters as well. Next up, we have plastic coming in. And so some of that plastic is redirected into the circuit board assemblers, and the rest is sent on down the line for use later. We have the second stop for our copper here, which is going into a handful of machines producing wiring, which is then sent forward to be turned into cable. And our iron is unloaded into two constructors making screws. The remainder of our plastic is then sent into the computer manufacturer as well as the supercomputer manufacturer. Now, I also wanted to show you guys a trick I use whenever I'm working on a new build. You may have noticed this train in some of my more recent time lapses, and this is something that I use once I have trains unlocked. This is a sort of mobile storage base for me. So whenever I'm working on a new build, we extend our train lines out to that location, drive this train out there, and then what we have in our cars is all of the materials we need in order to build. And you can see I've been pulling from these a fair bit for this factory. So we are running low on a few things or running lower, but it was plenty for us to have all the materials we needed here without making trips all the way back to main base to get what we needed. Now, I want to make one more note about this factory real quick, and that is at the production rate. We're only making one supercomputer a minute, which is not very much uh, by any stretch. I think most of the supercomputer factories you might be able to find make several times that, but I think one might actually be enough for us for this playthrough. And the reason for that is supercomputers are rather limited in what we need them for. We're going to need several of these for making some advanced miners, for making nuclear power plants and things like that. And by my approximation, I'm guessing we might want about a thousand stockpiles for that. We're also going to need some of them for our final space elevator parts. In particular, we're going to need 4,000 of them. And so I'm estimating that we're probably going to need somewhere in the area of 5,000 supercomputers. At one a minute, this is going to take 5,000 minutes, and that's a bit over 83 hours. 83 hours and 20 minutes exactly, in fact. Now, 83 hours is a very long time, and I'm not going to leave the game running overnight or anything to to get us there, but if we take a look at our playtime for this world already, we are well over 300 hours, and it is very reasonable that we might hit that 400 hour mark before we're ready to send away that space elevator, which would mean we've gotten all of the supercomputers we need. Now, it's also possible that we'll get there quite a bit faster, and we'll have to build another supercomputer factory or expand this one. We'll just have to see how things shake out. 
All right, and we are back here at main base and it has been a few hours since I built that factory. I've been working on uh, editing the time lapses. I went and had dinner and you can see that we have built up a healthy stockpile of supercomputers already. And so we're gonna grab a couple of those and pop on over to the hub and see if there's anything we can do with them. All right, I appear to have lost some footage there, but essentially we popped over here to the MAM and saw that the, uh, the supercomputer was used to unlock the geothermal generator. So we went ahead and unlocked that, uh, which means we have a new power building we can use, the geothermal generator. It does use some supercomputers as well as some other high-end components. And unfortunately, it doesn't produce very much power. Now that said, there are a lot of geysers around the map and they aren't used for anything else. So we may go ahead and set up a few just to sort of supplement our power supply system. Although we are not in danger of running out of power anytime soon. You can see at our big spikes, it looks like we might be getting up close to around 8,000, maybe maybe jumping over 8,000 here and there. Uh, but our production is, is up near 20,000 megawatts of power. So we are doing just fine. We have also gone through the sulfur tree and unlocked Nobelisk and the Nobelisk detonator, which means we'll finally be able to clear all of the rocks around the map. And we're going to go ahead and knock out this tree between episodes because I think we have everything we need to get the rifle and everything else. And the rifle is going to be a big tool for us as we move into the next part of the map we're going to be exploring, which is that sort of central part of the map with all the red trees, both the, the bamboo forest and the red jungle are, are chock full of very scary enemies and we are gonna have to take them down. All right, now here at the hub, you can see that I have unlocked aeronautical engineering. I did that between episodes, which actually is what gave us the supercomputer, but this is gonna be the emphasis of our next episode. We're gonna be taking a look at drones and drone-based logistics and setting up a battery factory in order to supply those. Now, I do wanna let you guys know I am gonna be moving away from the weekly episode format. I'm not done making satisfactory content by any stretch, but it takes so much longer to build a factory, to plan out a build, to film a time lapse, to do all the things that we do for these episodes late in the game, because a battery factory is so much more complex than a basic steel factory. And so it takes a lot longer, it's a lot more work, and I just can't keep up the same pace that I've been doing thus far. So we, we're gonna sort of break away from that once a week episodes and just sort of release them as they come. We are gonna keep up the guides once a week and and we've got some excellent stuff coming with late game logistics and plutonium here in the coming weeks and some build guides for different factories all throughout the game so keep an eye out for those uh but the let's play episodes may be a little more uh sort of spaced out now after we get through drones and drone ports we're going to be moving on to our tier 8 milestones in particular we'll be taking a look at nuclear power now i think we're probably going to hold off on building a nuclear power plant for just a little bit because we have plenty of power from our fuel power plant. And now this is something where we are going to want to do eventually, uh, but I think we need to get drones set up and see how that's gonna hit our power grid before we decide where exactly that's gonna fall. What I do wanna do fairly soon though, is get into advanced aluminum productions and set up a factory for fused modular frames. This along with turbo motors, which actually require those fused modular frames, are two of the last major components that we're gonna have to be crafting a bunch of. And so, those are definitely going to be episodes coming soon. And then from there, we'll take a look at the final space elevator and the end game. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. So I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Ben Dacoba, and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.